Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit a simple video using Kden Live. If you don't know what Kden Live is, it is one of the best free and open source software that you could use to make YouTube videos or even home videos or maybe even professional videos. It is that good. It's completely free as the name suggests and it has been made by the people at KDE who make the awesome desktop environment in Linux called Plasma, along with many other sub-projects, one of which is the famous Kden Live. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, if you are a Premiere user, or if you're switching from Windows to Linux, Kden Live is one of the best options you have. Even if you don't switch to Linux, Kden Live is easily available on Windows and on Mac OS. Or if you're a new user and you would love to get into video editing, you don't have to pay the Adobe tax. Kden Live is good for you. So first up, this is our project bin. This is where your clips are going to reside. So let's import some clips. But before that, we're going to have to create a new project. Click on new and select your type. So let's say that we have 30 FPS videos, but this is not going to be a guesswork. You're going to have to see what frame rate your videos are in. So let's just go ahead and check what this is in. And it looks like it's in 30. Let's just go ahead and make it. Okay, so this is actually 24. All right, so let's go ahead with 24 frames per second and 1080p footage. So this is 23.98. We're going to go ahead and click OK. You could increase the number of audio tracks, the number of video tracks. But for now, this is going to be more than enough for us. Let's click on OK. And now you have a project created. What you're going to do is you're going to want to drop your files into your project bin. What I do is create a folder called Project Bin, take all my files, and just drag and drop them. You want to make them load. And now let's go ahead. Now, before we dive into video editing, this is our clip monitor. So you could view all of our clips. You could set in points and out points. That is, you could say you don't want the entire clip. You want the clip from here to say here. So you could take this part. And if you drag and drop it onto the timeline, which I will explain in a minute, only that part of your clip is going to be selected. Let's get rid of those. All right. So let's say you drag a clip. Let's take this shot. It's the establishing shot of a stadium. Let's take this clip and drag it onto our timeline. Now, this is a video track. These below are audio tracks. You can increase, you can decrease the number of them as you want to. And right now, as you can see, another monitor is showing our video. It's not a duplication. This is your project monitor. So whatever happens in your project, it's going to display that. OK, so let's see how the playback works. Yeah, it seems, seems pretty good. Now, if you have difficulty in playback, what you can do is click on Preview Resolution. Click the drop down icon, and instead of having it like one to one you could set it down to 720p 540 360 240 depending on how much cpu power your computer has now this is not meant to be a full-fledged kden live tutorial this is just for beginners and if you're switching over from premiere you just want to hand hold a little bit this is the video for you with that out of the way let's put in some additional clips let's say the playing football clip seems fine so we're going to drag that in and put it over here now if i play the clip oh and by the way whenever i move this this is called a playhead so this shows you the exact point in time where you're playing the clip or you're pausing the clip this is also important for cutting the footage which you can do from this icon or you could select x for cutting s for select Let's play the clip using spacebar. As you can see, the change was quite jarring because it didn't have proper transition. So 
what I'm going to do is put a transition. But before that, as you can see, there is a ghost audio file, even though there isn't any audio. So to remove any unwanted audio, what you do is right click on it and click on ungroup clips because they're grouped by default, as you could have guessed. Click on it and press delete and boom, it's gone. Now for a very basic transition, what you could do is you could hold on to this red dot, drag it a little bit to the left. And similarly, you have a green dot a little bit to the right. What this is going to do is going to give you a fade in and fade out type of transition. This is called dip to black in Premiere. You're going to find it very familiar. It's just an easy way to create the fade in fade effect transition if you're new to Kid and Live. So as you can see, that was a smooth transition. But there is also another way of doing transitions. So if you drag and drop this clip, let's say over here. And once again, we're going to ungroup the clips and take care of the audio. Now what you could do is see this purple line or purple dot you click on it and automatically it gives you a wipe transition so if i press the playhead over here you can see we got a nice smooth dissolve now what you could do if you want to increase the interval of your transition duration you simply slide it as long as you want to and you increase the wipe so now if I press here and if I press play, it's going to take a much longer time. But do you only have wipes? Of course not. You got plenty. So this is where your effects or compositions are stored. Now right off the bat, you have wipe method. So what you could do is you could click over here and as you can see, you have a ton of options. So let's go ahead and say choose this. It's cloud. Okay, so let's see. So as you can see, the transition changed and like this, we could easily change transitions and there are a lot of transitions as you saw. We can pick and choose all day if you wanted to. But for me, I like a simple wipe. So let's go ahead and click on dissolve, which is actually wipe so all right yeah now we're going to decrease the time again to this and this seems more appropriate okay so now what i want to do is go ahead and add some sound any football game is nothing without the sound so what I could do is because the audio track is so short, what you could do is you could press control plus C to copy and you could press control plus V in any other portion of your video to paste it. Bring it up and there you go. You could go ahead and paste it multiple times. And there you have it. Now, this could be a bit jarring because the transition between the two levels are not exactly ideal. I would not recommend you to actually do this, but for the purposes of this video, it's okay. So the main thing I wanted to test out today is the fan sound, right? So if we click over here, if you press play, let's see what happens. Ooh, and the sound is very high. So what we're going to want to do is right click click on insert an effect and click volume. So now that we have added a volume effect, let's go ahead and decrease it to negative 17 decibels. And let's hear it once again. And yeah, that is way more tolerable. As you can see, it didn't carry over because this is a separate clip. So we're going to have to add it manually to all of these. So let's just go ahead, 17, do this again, 17. Okay, now this should be fine. And because it's negative 17 decibels, I don't think the jarring transition between these two audio clips is going to be very noticeable. Let's play and see how it goes. Well, it is noticeable, which is why I don't recommend you doing it, but again, for the purposes of this video, I think it's okay. So what most people do is 
end the music right at the place where your video ends, but I like to keep it a little bit more just so that you have a fade in effect. What I do is like your videos, when you have a fade in effect for audio, this actually decreases or increases your audio levels depending on where you fade in or fade out. So this is a fade out. So what you could do is you could pull it in so that it gradually fades out your audio and there is no jarring transition. So let's press play and see how it goes. As you can see, that is way more suitable and way more understandable. What you could also do is you could just add these to here. It's like I said, yeah, it's you, you should never do it, but whatever. Let's hear the transition once again. Okay, so now that we're done editing our very nonsensical video with bad audio, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and hit the render button. This is going to finalize and output your edit to a single file. For YouTube, what I generally do is click on MP4, H.264, AAC, and you're going to want to name the video. So let's say Football Mania. And by default, you could select encoder speed, which is at fast. Now, you don't, if you're a beginner, you don't have to mess with these. It's okay. You could go with the number of threads to maximum. This is basically using your CPU to render the video. You also have parallel processing set to checked by default. So now that you're done with everything, you just hit on render to file and you wait for Kaden Live to finish rendering your video. And then we're going to see how it plays and we're going to wrap this video up. Okay, now that we're done with rendering, as you can see, it took about a minute and 30 seconds. We're going to close it and we're going to open up our video file. And by default, the video file is stored under home and video, so it should be right here. Yeah, as you can see, Football Mania, it's absolutely here. Let's go ahead and give it a play. Yeah, it's, it's fine. So with that, I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Again, Kaden Live is a completely free and open source software. It's very useful. I use it every day for YouTube, like I already mentioned, because I am on Linux. There is no way I'm going back to Premiere anytime soon. This is their website, kadenlive.org. You could download the latest version. It's available in flat packs. Click on the download button. And you can have basically whatever you want to. You could go for Macs, even though the Mac doesn't appear to be here. So basically, you have your Windows and your Linux packages. So with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this brief look at Caden Live. And well, maybe I'll see you guys next time. Peace.